The Netanyahu government is now openly talking about destroying some outposts in Yesha, and American pressure seems to only be increasing. Shalom to Knesset member, Minister Yuli Edelstein of the ruling Likud party. Shalom to you too. So yesterday you met with the members of the Yesha Council. What was the purpose of this meeting? Well, the purpose of the meeting was to act together in order to avoid the situation we are witnessing, uh, unfortunately, during the last week, when on one hand, uh, uh, everything concerning the uh, n at least natural growth of uh, settlements in Judea and Samaria is in the same situation it uh, unfortunately used to be during the last several years under Olmert. Uh, and uh, at the same time, where we see um, uh, attempts, at least, to evacuate uh, certain outposts without any serious uh, attempt uh, to uh, try to explain to the settlers what is the policy or the new policy of the Israeli government. You know, recent uh, statements by the defense minister bring back memories of when the Likud was in the opposition with Ehud Barak proudly stating no new communities have been established with him at the helm of defense. How are you dealing with these issues politically? Uh, that's exactly the difference, between, the difference between Likud being in the opposition or uh, between today's uh, government headed by the Likud. Uh, my position on that is very simple, and I expressed it to the heads of the Yesha Council and uh, in numerous public interviews. I think that uh, no minister should conduct uh, private policy on the issues of that statute. There must be a serious discussion in the government. There must be a serious decision on our policy in Judea and Samaria. And part of this policy could be dealing with uh, outposts. But uh, definitely the outposts are not uh, exactly the headline of all our, can't be definitely the headline of all our activities in Judea and Samaria. So the first and foremost is uh, to continue building in uh, places that are part of the consensus. By the way, uh, when you listen to the defense minister in cabinet meetings, uh, uh, he is part of this consensus. But uh, in practical terms, we haven't seen anything moving yet. So this is exactly the demand. Uh, um, of uh, of myself and of several of my colleagues, uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll see very soon the change in the policy. Now, Prime Minister Netanyahu is talking about the need to deal with uh, so-called illegal outposts. This seems reminiscent of Ariel Sharon saying things look different when you are the premier. Do you think you might find yourself? defined as a rebel? I can, uh, first of all, proudly say that uh, what we witnessed uh, in Washington was uh, a totally different prime ministerial behavior. I think that uh, Netanyahu not only managed to come to the States to deliver a message, not only managed to say no, he managed to leave Washington with good atmosphere and with certain important promises from the American administration, including full, fi full funding of the project HATS-3. Uh, and uh, I think that, uh, that uh, uh, we can't deny that it was uh, a, a serious diplomatic achievement. B, the Prime Minister expressed the views and presented the position of the, of a government that is very different uh, than those of uh, Olmert or Sharon. Uh, uh, that's why I don't see any comparison or any possibility to compare between the present situation in which we have a legitimate discussion inside the cabinet, cabinet and the situation in which Ariel Sharon basically ignored the decisions of uh, his own party and uh, of his own faction. And uh, the result was that, by the way, not uh, Likud have to, had to leave, but Ariel Sharon with a bunch of his supporters had to leave the Likud. Now, many of these uh, decisions are coming under intense American pressure. And many are saying the U.S. has broken past deals with Israel uh, between Clinton and Netanyahu and Pollard, for one. Do you think maybe it's time to say enough is enough? We are an independent nation and we should stop following the dictates of the United States of America. <laughs> A, we are an independent state. B, uh, the issue of power was raised by Prime Minister during his uh, recent uh, visit to, to Washington. And C, uh, it's uh, very easy to uh, make such declarations, and uh, we also have to foresee the results. I don't uh, see too many friends uh, around the world, I mean, serious 
countries, uh, well, we can name can- Canada in this context, probably a couple of other countries, but uh, it's not that there's a serious alternative. And we say that if we decide, you know, to quote-unquote quarrel with the American administration, we are getting the support of the European Union or European Union or of Russia, for that matter, or whoever. That's not the case. Uh, and uh, with all the different opinions we have with the United States, there is not much new about them. And uh, I uh, remember how uh, Reagan and uh, Bush Sr. and uh, Clinton and Bush Jr. Uh, all used to make statements about settlements and Judea and Samaria and uh, and uh, things that are uh, not uh, seen eye to eye by Israel and the American American administration. But at the same time, they did stay a friend and they did stay uh, a partner on different issues. And that's how it should be. So tell me. Are you optimistic that we will get through this, or do you think there will be clashes uh, such as evacuations? Well, future? I'm definitely not a prophet. What I can say is that uh, there will be every possible effort on my part and on part of several of my colleagues to avoid unnecessary clashes, to stop these uh, cat-and-mouse games that uh, we are witnessing right now. It it's not good for the country. It's not good for the government. It's not good for our foreign policy. I don't think that Barack administration is uh, naive enough to believe that that's how Israel deals with uh, the issue of outposts, so with the issue of Judea and Samaria. And uh, uh, I think that that uh, uh, what we will see, uh, God willing, in the nearest future is a very well-planned government policy in Judea and Samaria. As part of this policy, some of the outposts that are not part of the existing settlement are not uh, veteran outposts that basically turned into regular Yishuvim uh, will have to uh, be removed. I hope that it will not be done by army or the police, but rather by plain negotiations. But at the same time, I uh, want to see the mayors and the leaders of the Yesha Council in Judea and Samaria, alongside the regular residents like myself on Judea and Samaria, happy because they see the development, because they see uh, new kindergartens, new schools, and new houses built in existing settlements in Judea and Samaria. Minister Yuli Edelstein, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.